Oh my goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Did you enjoy your break? I hope so. Uh, I'm just like, you know what I didn't think about until after it was over uh, and I've been sitting in the office in here uh, is um, I didn't think about um, having to do like sitting out in the sun for four hours. I didn't think about. And then, you know, how, like you ever been out in the sun for like four hours and it just makes you feel like a truck hit you after a while? Uh, what are you talking? You calm down, Yeni. Calm, just calm down over there. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and we're going to welcome in the crew, uh, Andy and the team from Last Comic Shop. Although Andy's just a black box. Yeah, I I I swear to gosh, I had I had <clears throat> video when I was in the green room. Uh I really did. I mean, and then I got here and then it was like all of a sudden like no, no no video and uh hmm. boy. You're just circles. Here. Maybe try to refresh or something like that. I don't know. Um let me try. I'll let me try refreshing here. I'll I'll do <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it on again. Technology is wonderful. I- I'm just here for technical support. <laughs> well, you are the man we need, except we lost our guy. That's fine. Quick, lock the room <laughs> before he comes back. All right. Whole you, world's you. waiting on Andy. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, I don't know so, why. That's so weird that that would be doing that. But um, yeah, well, he, what are you guys going to be doing today? So, traditionally, we do the big crossovers, and this year we are bringing the X-Men and Star Trek. Dun, dun, dun. We're that? bringing all, all the geeks together, not that's just right. the X-Men. That's, comic wi- that's wild. That is very but wild. Star yeah. Trek geeks as well. And uh, the story, actually, while being from the 1990s, has some serious throwback appeal because it, it goes back to the, like, 100... Issue 125 of the X-Men, so that's late 70s, and uh, Season 1, Episode 3 of Star Trek. Wow. Well, I, I, while we wait for Andy to get back, let us know uh, a little bit about who you are and uh, what you normally do on uh, Last Comic Shop. There you go. So on The Last Comic Shop, we are a comic book-based podcast. Each week, we pick a book, we read a book, we rate a book, and then we recommend other comic books. Uh, The goal being to help make comics more accessible for folks, to uh, let people get into that comic book tent uh, and see what's going on. There I I am. Oh, my goodness. Just in time. (laughs) That's right. Our fearless leader. Did I come a little bit late? Just a second. Right in the middle of the spiel. Yeah, yeah. We're the last comic shop. I'm the host of the most, Andy Larson. I'm joined by Chad Smith and Jay Scott. I don't know if he said that already, but... uh, Long story short, we are the last comic shop podcast. Bring the fun back into funny books. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody out there knows that comic books are for everybody. And uh, we educate and uh, make sure that folks know that like, they can go into a comic book shop today, find tons of books that are out there, uh, something for everybody. And uh, we hope that we entertain you for the next hour, raising some money for uh, helping out the cancer Research Institute, which uh, I'm again for the fourth straight year in a row. Thanks so much for having us on, Nick. Like, Thank you for coming we back. Are so overjoyed to be on this event every single year, and and hopefully we we bring you some cash. I mean, I came to play, <laughs> brother. Came to play. So uh, if you guys start yeah. reading Twilight, more money might come in. I don't know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's an Avengers Twilight book happening right now. It just wrapped up last month. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Chad, did you show the book that we were going to be doing today? Did I you get- did. Yeah, we are. We're working to bring those Trekkies together uh, with those X fans. And Jay had already pointed out that this is a story that dates back to the Prime uh, Burn or not Burn? Was it Burn? John or Burn. Still, yes. Yeah. Chris still Claremont, Claremont. John Burn. There you go. The Burn Co- or Claremont X Men, as well as season one of that five year mission of the initial Star Trek. Yeah, absolutely. And it continues a trend on the, of, of the last Comic Shop podcasts uh, segments on uh, these shows, in which we 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 tackle some of the more interesting comic book team ups that are out there. We did uh, Superman and Spider Man. 
We did Superman versus Muhammad Ali, which I think I think Nick commented. He's like, "Why? How? How is that a fair fight?" And uh, but we showed how it was. They, yeah, they the answer's a red and sun. <laughs> I'm even more curious got- about this one, to be honest. Like, I'm just like, what? And, but I think I think Nick it took that one step further the following year when we did Batman versus Hulk, and as I remember, you were on my side, Nick, with saying like, like "Glad that like Hulk actually won that because Batman plus time does not equal win." It, it, it's it's like that's a cop. Let a me. Uh, I'm gonna uh, excuse me. I'm gonna simulate that fight for you right now in real time. That's uh, that's <laughs> this is Batman. If that wasn't clear. If this wasn't clear, I, I don't make me find my my meme that I have that's like Batman syndrome, where it's like realistically any super powered superhero would strangle Batman with his own asshole, <laughs> especially oh. the Hulk. There you go. It's the exposed mouth. Yeah. That's in, really, in this really in this year, you get you get Wolverine versus Spock. <laughs> Heck yeah! Not only that, you get the two Doctor McCoys. Right. Someone says Dr. McCoy and everybody turns around. Absolutely. I'm so well, we were this. having some fun though this morning when we were talking about what we were gonna do on this segment. Because again, the book is fairly short. It's only about 45 pages when it began it beginning to end. Uh there's some back matter where they're teasing a bunch of other Star Trek books that uh Marvel was putting out in the mid nineties. But uh simply put, it's not there's not much of a story here. So uh I woke up this morning to 20 line text messages from Chad, who was on his <laughs> morning commute, uh, talking about other awesome comic book sitcom slash TV show mashups that we potentially could have. Chad, do you want to go through your list or sh- should I? <laughs> well, okay. So here's the deal. Since we commonly do these team ups and mashups and everything else, one of the things we propose for the live stream for the Cure audience is for a minor, meager, $5 or more donation, you can give us elements that we will mash up for you very quickly. And so uh, this morning I woke up and I was on my my commute into work and it it hit me. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, This is more than just a comic book mashup. This is a comic book TV mashup. And so that's going to be our theme for this year uh, where... What would happen if your favorite comic book characters were mashed up with your favorite classic TV shows? Yeah. And so I got a couple, couple examples just to get the ball rolling. So one was uh, the Wonder Girl years uh, starring uh, Danica, Danica McKellar. Is that her name? As, yes. uh, as the Teen Titans resident math specialist, you'd still have uh, Kevin Arnold, Fred Savage. You'd still have him there whining about things, asking obnoxious questions in Titans Tower, along with the rest of the Titans, Beast Boy, Robin, uh, you know, Wonder Girl would be there. Uh, but this time around, remember the neighbor? What was the neighbor on the Wonder Years? Does anybody remember? The kid with the glasses? Uh, A little no, bit I nerdy. don't actually. I just know the gr- it was the girlfriend, Whitney, Whitney, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But we all know who he turned into, right? No, oh, my volume down. Lost your mic. Yeah, I was, I was going to say I wasn't her name Whitney. I think her name was Whitney. Maybe I can't. Remember. Yeah, that was the character's name. Yeah. No, the neighbor. Everybody knows the the geeky neighbor turned into Marilyn Manson, who in this scenario and the Wonder Girl years would team up with Brother Blood and wreak havoc all across the. Uh, but so that was one that I texted at six in the morning. Uh, let's I see like another one. Uh, George from Seinfeld joins the Justice League International and sends Despero a Christmas gift of a donation to the Human Fund. At which, po- which point, Despero wants to know what the hell that's all about. Is there feats of strength involved there? Like, does somebody <laughs> like? Come on! I mean, Booster Gold would be awesome for the feats of strength. He would just be. Like, let's just say aluminum would go everywhere. <laughs> And, and then J.A. hit me with one of my favorites out of the blue. Do you remember yours, J.A.? Well, I had uh, I had the Three's Company mashed with uh, Gwen Stacy, MJ, and Peter Parker. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And Mr. Roper still. Just peeking in to see what's going on. Wonder, yep. Where the yeah. hell is that Peter Parker going? You could have J. Jonah Jameson be the Mr. Roper character. But Parker! No, no, you keep that's good. You, those you girls keep... up there for? Yeah. That's but, good. Uh, that wasn't the one that got me. Jay, you had another uh, one that really hit home. I think my wife would want to watch this one. Uh, the Cheers one? 
No, the the real one. Oh right, yes. I so I had uh, uh, this was the uh, the real housewives of the Hellfire, Hellfire Club. Club. <laughs> So like what like white queen and black queen and and all those yeah yes. just yeah just smacking those people around <laughs> accusing <laughs> people wow wow so that that's the premise you think of uh, two shows that will mash up and, and we'll do that thing you want to go Gilligan's Island and uh, the X Men's Krakoan Island it's just all yeah, the professors trying to bang Marianne <laughs> uh, so we can mash them up. <laughs> Surely, <laughs> make it happen. This is a kid. This is an all ages show. You, you just I, apologies, <laughs> apologies. I I won't tell you about my Alf Tiger one. Then I'll keep that. You guys, one. you guys didn't <laughs> listen to the last segment with Ray, then did you? So um, <laughs> just tune yeah. it in. Just tune it but in. I'm, I'm surprised. Did, did in in that 29? Because I did. I stopped reading all of the 29 text chat. Did you say? Did you say Mash and GI Joe or no? No, it didn't get there. I did get oh, friends, see, but instead of the ugly naked guy, they have the Punisher. And they peek out their window, just <laughs> oh watch God. the Punisher killing people. <laughs> watch Ross pivot! Pivot! Well, you heard it here, there. folks. Uh, if, you, if you donate a measly $5, you can throw out two, a, a comic book and a TV show, or he, heck, even like two TV shows. We'll mash those up. That's fine. Um, That's right. We'll put our, our MTV cribs with Lil Wayne and Bruce Wayne. Lil Wayne accidentally discovers the Bat Cave. Hilarity and trauma ensue. Oh, It'd be great. The, the but in, in, while we wait, the A team mixed with Fantastic Four or Cheers, where everybody knows your alter ego name. <laughs> nice. Right. We'll but, spawn. But then all the super villains have the bar upstairs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so in any case, while we wait for folks to 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 to, to give us some of these mashups to work on, let's let's go ahead and get started with the show. As we often do, we like to start off with talking about the creators that were involved with this mashup of X Men and Star Trek. Um, and there, you there go. was no Gene and Roddenberry this- involved. There was no Chris Claremont involved. J A. Who was or was it? No, Chad's doing that. Chad, I got this one. I, who, I got the sheet right who, here. Who worked on this. Okay, so this came out in uh, 1996, the heyday for Marvel crossovers, uh, which, by the way, that Marvel DC omnibus that's coming out later on this year, rumor has it's only going to be one printing, so get it while it's hot. But uh, in this one, this came out through uh, Marvel and Top Cow representing Paramount Comics. Uh, It was written by Scott Lobdell, and then the founder of Top Cow uh, on pencils, Mark Silvestri, was assisted by Billy Tan, Andrew Wynn, and David Finch, uh, and background assist by Brian Ching. Or Brian Ching, I should say. And then on inking duties, you have Bat, Detron, Billy Tan, Aaron Sawa, and Joe Weems, along with assists by Victor Lamas, Team Tron, Joseph Jag, Gillian, Viet Trong, and Mike Mansazarek. <laughs> <That's, laughs> Those are names that I've said. That and is then a on, hefty name right there. Hey, there by the go. way, speaking of Scott Lobdell, because he wrote this, he was the guy that took over for Chris Claremont when Chris Claremont said, Enough with Jim Lee, right? Like there was a point when like Chris would write a script, he'd send it to Jim, Jim would draw like two pages and then change something and then he'd have to re-script it. And then they so they brought Scott in, right? Or no? Well, initially it was John Byrne. Oh, okay. Scripting duties. But then shortly thereafter, that didn't last long. Uh shortly thereafter, Scott Lobdell took over the X-Books and held them through the heyday. Everybody talks about the X-Men 97 cartoon. Uh, which had those Jim Lee designs, but the the books that were coming out through ninety two through ninety seven, those were your Scott Lobdell's, uh, and drawn by the Cuberts, and yeah. uh, that ran X Men. John Romita Jr. was in there. Was he a stand up comedian previously to being a writer? Like I thought they, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think of that Marvel, that Marvel, the Untold story. I thought he was like a, a stand up comedian or something. I just remember he was available. <laughs> they were looking for a writer, and he was like, I'll do it. And they're like, okay. I'll it's the best-selling it. book in the universe, and they're, yeah, th- go ahead, buddy. And they gave him the gig. Wow. Well, without further ado, J.A., can you can you give us the 10 cent synopsis for what happens in this mashup of, from, uh, not a galaxy far, far away, no. it's uh, It was in a galaxy far, far away. Well, no, not a galaxy far, far It was our galaxy, just in the future, because Star okay. Trek 
exists in in our galaxy. Um, so the X Men came to us in the future. Uh, it starts out with the Enterprise near Delta Vega, and if you're a big there we go. Here comes the money. All right. We've got Panel Pals of the Last Comic Shop, a $200 donation. You guys serious? Come oh, on now. No. Love it. <laughs> hey, those are the kids. They saved their pennies. Thank you. They're buying more comics. They're sending you the money for that cancer research. Yeah, that's so amazing. Thank you so, so much. $200 donation. Officially now the biggest donation we've gotten so far. Uh, the biggest, biggest single donation, I should say, that we've gotten so far this year. So thank you so much. That's amazing. Well, but they didn't give you. Thank they didn't you give you anybody power. to mash up though. So, <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's, that's all right. Um, so as I was Delta saying, Vega. Delta Vega. If if you're a big Star Trek fan, that is the location of Episode Three of the original series, where no man has gone before. Uh, that is the episode where Clark, uh, Jim Kirk's best friend. Uh, Gary Mitchell becomes a god, essentially, yes. and then is marooned on a planet and killed. And and there's a big, you know, should you let should you let oh, your friend die? That was like the, what the the second pilot they shot after this, the cage. No, uh, it, it didn't no, air it first, not. but correct. Yes, and uh, had uh, Gary Lockwood, yes, who was a big star Mitchell. at the time, right? Uh, Lieutenant Gary Mitchell. Anyway, Doris Kelly nowhere in the episode. It's uh, and they all wear. Weird but he is helmets. in this book, so he is. He is, but the not in that uh, the episode. Enterprise goes back to this location because there is an anomaly. Whenever there's uh, whenever you need people in different worlds to come together, you can always rely on a, a good old space anomaly. So there's a space anomaly, and suddenly, uh, the X Men show up. Their craft explodes. Spock indicates that there were seven life forms not human on this craft, and now they're gone. But of course, they're not gone. They just transported over to the Enterprise. Uh, that craft is soon followed by another craft, uh, which is the Guardians and Deathbird, which is a Ooh. big X Men baddie. The Shire. Shire. Empire, yes, and basically uh, the the big bad thing that Gary Lockwood turned into, uh, Gary Mitchell, Lieutenant Gary Mitchell turned into and then died for, is combined with this big energy uh, thing. evil thing from the U <laughs> from uh, from the X Men universe called Proteus. So they form Grotius. And they form Grotius, yes, which is a uh, – he's a bit grody. That is true. And then uh, the X-Men team up with the crew of the Starship Enterprise to try to defeat this reanimated corpse energy being. Yeah. But you are you are leaving out so many awesome points of this. So you've got well, well that's off, what we're going to talk about. I mean, we're right, going to talk well, about the fact that that, 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 Gator, that, right? that Wolverine goes Wolverine goes after Spock <laughs> and gets nerve pinched. <laughs> you got Gladiator, Gladiator, who everybody knows is kind of like the equivalent, one of the you know S Superman stands-ins of the Marvel universe. Super godly, powerful guy. He punches. The Enterprise, like the Enterprise is just there. He just decides to wail on it. And I think that's the most interesting thing about this entire series is like you've got comic book tropes like, again, punching, laser blasts, things like that, kind of mashing up with those crazy costumes of the 19, the original series of uh, Star Trek, which, again, with like the kind of like the bell bottom pants and the boots and like the fact that Kirk is hitting on uh, yeah. Jean Grey at one point. Oh, you're so uh, voluptuous there. Uh, yeah, that's what my Well, that's my that's that's one of the things I loved about it is is the, the the Star Trek characters are very much, you know, drawn like Star Trek like normal in their normal outfits, but the X-Men are very much drawn like cartoons of the 90s. They're very skin tight. 
they're very anatomic, um, anatomically incorrect, <laughs> exaggerated. Pretty sure well. Kirk was. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kirk was just staring daggers into those torpedoes on Jean Grey's chest. There. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And I will say, from a, a comic fan perspective, uh, I, I normally rag on the uh, modernized coloring, but I really think it serves Sylvester and Company and their art here when they're doing the uh, the likenesses of the Star Trek Enterprise characters. Like that coloring really makes Sylvester's art pop, and you can see the best of both worlds. You know, between his line work. And then the shading, like, very rarely does it work out that well. I thought they did a great job on the colors here. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. That One of the high points of this, regardless of how, I'm not going to lie, it's ridiculous. Like, the whole 47 pages was just ridiculous. I, I, I had a hard time keeping a straight face throughout. And again, I read Batman Hulk. I, I actually love that book. But, um one of the one things that was really nice was Mark Silvestri's art. Um, this is not my favorite Silvestri. I think that's more still the uh, Outback X-Men period. Um, this is a little too, I don't know, a little too sketchy, a little too uh, cross cross hatching and so forth. Like it's just a little, you could tell it's like the, at the time he was what doing what fathom uh, and those not no, fathom. He didn't do fathom. You're thinking Witchblade. Oh, Fathom okay. was Michael Turner. Come on, oh, man. All right. Well, fine. Fine. Witchblade, right? There was another girl that barely wore any clothes, and she was, you know, on a, on a page. An and I bought two, co a two copies of that. I was <laughs> going to say, speaking bag. of things I bought multiple copies of, there's an homage in here to that Thing cover that Rob Liefeld did in Youngblood, Youngblood 6 with Bad Rock, or maybe it was Youngblood 5. But you get that with Gladiator here. How cool is that? It's true. It's true. That, but that's true. The inside baseball is, there is incredible. But, but that's one of the fun things about this is I, like I'm not a Trek guy. I you know I know the tagline about where they split the infinitive and they boldly go where no man has gone before. I know the character names and I know the Chris Pine movies and that's about my, the extent of my Trek knowledge. But I was able to enjoy this and get, uh, you know, full characterizations. Well, not full characterizations, but I knew who the characters were and everything seemed natural and it seemed fun and kooky and reflective of that series. Meanwhile, I got my X-Men fix with longtime X-Men artist Mark Silvestri. So that was a win-win for me. Yeah. I was curious about J.A. Again, he is our resident, not only X-Men fan, but a longtime Star Trek fan. So, like, was this a uh, marriage made in heaven or did you also think it was goofy? I thought it was goofy a bit. I uh, they lean more towards the X Men characters versus the Star Trek characters, so you didn't get much of any Yahura or um, no Chekhov. Though I guess technically he wasn't in that episode, so maybe he wouldn't have been on the bridge. He wasn't in season one of of Star Trek, and no Sulu really. I mean, besides some some piloting McCoy was there for the whole Dr. McCoy and and Beast and Dr. McCoy turn their heads and and say yes but it was really a a Kirk Spock production on the and and Scotty for a little bit yeah Scotty could Scotty could sense that there was Wolverine was calling around and the duct worked that that I thought was nice <laughs> I like how they, they hooked Bishop up to the Enterprise, and they're just like, meh, he can be our MacGuffin. We can use him to do some tractor beam hullabaloo nonsense. And his ability to do something with energy, yeah, that'll work. Sure. And, and so we'll hook him up with some, some battery cables. And <laughs> I was surprised how well the universe is melded together. I didn't anticipate Star Trek having, you know, telekinetic mutants you know, in their universe, just named Gary. I did yeah, think that was kind true. of a letdown. I think, to your point, Chad, one of the best moments in this particular book was there's a moment when Kirk uh, basically tells Jean Grey about what happened with Gary Mitchell, right? Like that Gary Mitchell got these powers, his ability to reshape reality and everything like that. And so she asked him, like, well, what, what happened after that? And he's like, well, I killed him because we couldn't have him running around like that. And she just answers him point blank for all those folks that have been watching the X-Men 97 cartoon series out there. She just says, so you just killed him because he was a mutant? 
And he was like, no, no, no. It was because he was, he was crazy. Like, but really deep. He down, was going to, like, he was, what I liked is you go the sort of the layer deeper is like, yeah, but he was going, he had the ability to, to destroy not just himself, but it, the entire universe. And yeah, it's the godlike powers. Right. Godlike powers. And, and she was like, yeah, I could, I can kind of understand that since she had godlike powers and that's and true. Destroyed the entire universe. That's true. But like, and got honestly, killed for it. think about it. Uh, and this is just me playing comic book nerd and putting on my comic book hat. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, if if that's true, what Gary Mitchell has, he's no different than like Franklin Richards. But like, so if Kirk was around uh, little little Franklin, he'd be like, yeah, murder the guy. Well, like, you're murdering. Hey, he's going to be a threat to the universe. Yeah, hey, I'm a cowboy. His yeah. mom's hot, so we'll save her. <laughs> and Franklin's uniform was also a t-shirt. So that fits. That's he's slightly true. older Franklin. Yeah. Yeah, so, but that was an interesting. That was like some of the best writing I thought was because um, some of the rest of it was like like Wolverine craw crawling around the docks. I did like how he called Kirk a cowboy. He's like, well, if you're the right cowboy for the job, I know that we can count on you. But then there was like that one weird scene where they went down to the planet and there's Deathbird and Gary Mitchell, and then there's those dudes behind him wearing like spandex. Chad, can you show that picture? Of those rando guys with like a T on his chest and like, yeah, it was that must have been Carl and Ricky. <laughs> yeah. James. Like, it was so that that panel to me was like that was oh, ridiculous. That's the, oh come on, that that is the quintessential 1990s hairband. Look at that, <laughs> man. <laughs> Gary and the T birds. Wait, no. yes, like that that. It just, That's Tom. So it, that is it, a just, rock again, and roll band. If I ever saw one with the, the, the costumes of the Star Trek folks, which again are, are kind of goofy anyways. Like um, it's amazing how like those mini skirts that like all the Star Trek ladies had to wear at that time was that was standard issue for some bizarre <laughs> reason. Um, but, but like that. And then you have like these, these hunky Here dudes. Comes the money. Ooh. I want, I want. We had uh blah 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 tiltify work for me la 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 we had <laughs> <laughs> I love this a one hundred dollar anonymous donation thank you anonymous uh Ooh. they said Hawkeye and Hawkman those that's your mashup I guess Hawkeye okay. and Hawkman <laughs> okay let's see uh this seems like it'd be easy it's a guy who shoots arrows and uh, has wings and gets uh killed by Cupid for stealing his gimmick. <laughs> starts a war with the angels and then it becomes a spawn book and then angela comes down but he can't use angela anymore so then that gets wow one hundred dollars uh -oh. that's a lot of money i can have my hair done at the beauty parlor with a hundred dollars you're well, that, my special that was definitely friend. not a one hundred dollar donation. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. That was a five dollar and twenty five cent donation from Chris Yaney, who wants you to cross over <laughs> Howard the Duck and Archie Bunker from All in the Family. Oh wow, that's super easy. Oh come on, yeah. they're just sitting in the lounge. They're they're sitting there, Barker loungers, smoking cigars. I mean, that's talking, true. Yeah, but that's their... after because you know that Arch is never going to let Howard date his daughter. Suzanne Summers is never going out on a date with a duck. We all saw what happened to Leah Thompson. And call him a featherhead, I guess, maybe. That's right. <laughs> Her career never right recovered. Style, right? They're gonna know, they're gonna find out that they, they have so many things in common. They both wear drab suits. They both look they both cars. they both they both uh, don't go with underwear. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're both existing in worlds they didn't make. They don't know what the heck's going on. Everything's wrong, and they're all cranky and cantankerous. And yeah, I'm sure they could bond over that. And then before you know it, they're both making fun of Meathead or Sweathog or whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> Sweathog. That was Welcome Back Carter. Uh, I get confused. Sweathog. They all run together, those shows. I do like, by the way, just speaking off the cuff about, I, I don't like, I actually like the sequel. To uh, to to uh, all the family more Archie Bunker's place where Archie Archie's owned the bar. That's actually because I never really liked the mom on that show. Like what? I didn't. The, the you know she was only supposed to be forty. You know forty on that show. She looked like she was eighty. 
She was wonderful. She was so kind. People were older back in the day. They were <laughs> older when they were yeah, younger. That's, like that's just what like forty year olds back in the day looked like. They looked like they were eighty seven. You gotta that's remember, right. like, yeah, exactly. When you Robert were twenty five in, in the nineteen seventies, you wore a suit. <laughs> that's right. And you didn't have sunscreen. In my life. This is what yeah, they didn't have sunscreen. Every building they went into was filled with people smoking cigarettes, like literally everywhere they went. <laughs> So yeah, disco ages, disco ages, yeah. you man. You yeah, know that, how that, bad that is for your joints. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a day! Edith was a dingbat, Yaney. That was the, that was the, that was the thing. A dingbat. Oh, yeah, a a dingbat. Wow. Poor Edith. Edith. I know. Edith. I know. I, and now I need to get a T-shirt that just says "Sweat Hogs" was not on all in the family. That's, <laughs> I think that's what I'm learning from this show. Well, what's um, his name? The director guy. What? What was his name? Norman Lear? The creator? No, the, uh, the Suzanne Summers boyfriend. Uh, oh, it's Rob Reiner. Yeah, yeah. it's Rob Reiner. Yeah. But what was his character? Meat Wad? Meathead. Meathead. No. Meathead. Meathead. Yeah. Meathead. Meathead. Meat Wad. Meat Wad. That's another one. We'll put him in there. I think his actual character name was Michael. Hey, man, don't put me on that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Lordy Hannah. Next time come um, in here in a full meat suit, Dan. Don't don't just come in here and talk like it. Somebody bring out Carl. Oh my Take care god. Of what you oh, saw oh, those triple Hey Nick, where's your friggin' Giants jersey? <laughs> What's up, Phil? What's up, Fly Man? Giants jersey. Hey. <laughs> All right, so so right. hopefully everybody out there knows. See, we we're doing it. Make sure that you get out your five dollars, folks. Throw out that fiver. Throw out that ten dollar. Let's make some money, folks. We you got us for another half an hour. Let's keep going. Yeah. Um, again, Here's another sampler for you guys. Uh, Boston Legal. Uh, since we're talking about Mr. Shatner here, but instead of Cop- or, uh, William Shatner, uh, we get Captain Kirk on Boston Legal, trying to perse- or prosecute crimes. And then instead of James Spader, we get Ultron and see how they do <laughs> in that lawyer sitcom. <laughs> no, that's 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 terrible. I, that's... I think I think you, you get uh, the Fantastic Four mashed up with the A-Team and they're chased by Dr. Doom, who goes around saying, this is where the A-Team becomes the B-Team. <laughs> And then you get Reed Richards. I love it when I play in like a warehouse all the time. And Mr. Fantastic's like, well, yes. luckily there's a molecular disintegrator over here and a welding kit. We can make an awesome. <laughs> Imagine the nobody. montages you can have with that. <laughs> to kill nobody. Because nobody dies, even though there's lots of bullets and explosions. Nobody dies on that show. It's, That's it. Not- there's no, I love it when a plan comes together. It's a 45 minute uh, soliloquy about what. Reed Richards is doing before the thing tells him he's afraid of heights and doesn't want to jump out of that airplane. Oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. X-Men and the Star Trek. Um, Things, other things that you guys may have picked out from this. Um, uh, I I think it wasn't long enough. Uh, As we said, you know, there wasn't a lot of Sulu or Chekhov or Yuhura in it. There was also not a lot of some of the X-Men characters got a bit of short shrift. I mean, Storm shows up for like two scenes. Gambit is there to be hurt. (laughs) Yeah. Go to the med bay. Yeah. That's that's the episode where he wasn't contracted to be on. Like he was. I mean, thank God it's not like a next generation comic because then he'd have been hitting on Crusher the whole time in the sick bay, right? Yeah, don't worry, man. It's the '90s. They did one of those. There we. Go. Yes, we got. Yeah, evidently it was popular enough that they had to come up with a sequel. Um, but uh, yeah, you're right, Ja. They didn't. They didn't actually do a lot with. They didn't actually do a lot with anybody, did they? Except for Bishop. Like Bishop was the well, big Bishop and Jean Grey and Jean Grey. Yeah. Bishop and Jean Grey, and 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 I guess uh, Wolverine. For a bit, and yeah, then like you got you got McCoy. McCoy basket. got to speak to both uh, Hank McCoy of uh, he got to do to Doctor McCoy, and he also got to speak to uh, Spock a bit. Yeah, and and they could geek out together. 
Right. That I don't know what crazy. you guys are complaining about. Star Trek only went three seasons. They didn't have a lot to work with. The, I'm sorry. What are you, you had... talking about? How dare you? How dare you, sir? <laughs> Say that it only went for three. It only went for three seasons. Yet we're still talking about this show that went for three seasons back in the 1960s. Yeah, I, don't, I never realized. Saw hey, fun fact for all those folks out there that may or may not know this: San Diego Comic Con. We had an opportunity to talk with um, uh, Paul Cornell, a comic book writer. He writes for TV and everything. We did it on the show. He basically what happened with San Diego Comic Con was way back in the day. The, the 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 science fiction cons decided to kick out all the Star Trek fans. They said, "You guys don't belong at a science fiction convention." And so, what happened? The literature, science fiction literature, right? Conventions. Yeah. And so, what happened was they all went to the San Diego Comic Con instead, and that's what transformed the San Diego Comic Con into money. from a comic con into like this mega movies, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it hadn't been for the Star Trek folks. Yoy, nothing but the Star Trek folks. Let's talk Shane O'Mac, folks. I heard that theme song. He goes, oh, he's, he's coming in. He's jumping off the Titan Tron. Uh, so, yeah, I was inspired by Dan coming in here doing the Meatwad voice. So I donated $10 and I want Aqua Teen Hunger Force and the Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know, Shake, he's going to walk into that joint and say, I run this place. Like, he's going to come in. He's going to be like, I am the great. He's going to be the drizzle. You remember the drizzle? I love the drizzle. He's going to come in and he's going to be like, I am the fume. (laughs) I got all the powers of the rain. And when it comes down, justice will rain. And then I get what? Pick it up from here, guys. Well, obviously, it was Bruce Wayne money. And so that's what uh, <laughs> gets them in the same room in the first place, you know. And then, uh, oh, what's the fry guy, Frylock? Yes. Frylock's trying to keep everything cool. Uh, but then uh, he encounters Martian Manhunter, who's also trying to keep things cool. Uh, they uh, have a nice conversation over some Oreos. Uh, trying to think of other. And then uh, Meatwad comes in. And Jay, what, what, what can happen with Meatwad? Uh, I don't know because I'm just I'm obsessed with the fact that Batman is actually Master Shake in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a ruse. Yes. Like when Mark Man had a ruse. Blood he exactly. Right? Yes. He's like And uh I was gonna say at ends the end of the episode we bring in the Wonder Twins and they become a form of water <laughs> and uh hang out on the side with Aqua Teen Hunger Force, you know, cleanse the palate and whatnot. Right, why not? Yeah, if you got hamburgers and fries and a shake, you do need a glass of water to wash that down with, and probably some sort of hawk to eat the leftovers, <laughs> I guess, or a seagull or, or something. Yeah. Are we, are we gonna pull in what's his name? The the Hawkman lawyer. <laughs> Harvey Birdman. <laughs> Harvey <laughs> Birdman. <laughs> we could. We could bring in the Space Ghost guys if you really wanted to. Like that would be great. That would be great. Uh, That's my jam. That would be. You'd have Brack coming on and singing that Bean song. It would be good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I there you go. They would they would coexist, and then uh, Bruce Wayne wouldn't get his money. Yeah. So but there you go. Did we, did we, did we give you a good one? There, Nick. Now, see, now, now oh, I gotta donate again. Hang on, I can't, I can't, I can't just, I can't just get free ones because I'm the host here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do the thing for for real here. No, I gotta get it in here. You guys, you guys, vamp. Do your thing. Yeah, I got this. Absolutely. All right, so back to Star Trek. Yeah, back to ran Star for more than three seasons. Well, it's about that time. When well, we I know there were the movies. Ratings. There were movies. What? Three seasons and some movies. That's not, right. not the Let's same. Let's get to ratings. So J.A. We usually gives us a one out of four scale for our particular books every single week. So J.A., what's our one out of four scale for the X-Men Star Trek crossover? Uh, one out of four phaser banks. Ooh, there you go. There what you go. What is a phaser bank? Is that because all the short skirts on set? <laughs> <laughs> That's where you keep your phasers when you're not using them. Okay, that's right. That's right. I, I'm bank. unfamiliar. I, I'm not a Star Trek guy. Sometimes you can use them. You can use the phaser ATM card to get it out. It's fine. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll go ahead and start off with Chad. He seemed to be the most enthralled by this book. 
Um, or at least was like, oh, yeah, this is fine. So was it fine? Uh, oh, dude, I, I love this stuff. This is 90s art at the 90s, 90s thing. Uh, I love Mark Silvestri. And then, like I said, the fact that the colors were enhancing the Silvestri art, that's like, you know, taking peanut butter and chocolate and somehow elevating that to the next level. Uh, you know, and that was just wonderful. By uh, elevating and- it by putting it inside of me. That's right. <laughs> Although I don't know about that. I don't think I want that candy bar once that happens. Maybe maybe more chocolate? I don't We're know. back to Ray's segment now a couple hours ago. It's just circles back around. There there it is. So I thought of another one when for whatever reason when uh Jay mentioned that Master Shake is Batman, I thought of I was like, all right, so what I need now is I need the Venture Brothers. And Batman, specifically because I need Bruce Wayne is missing, so Hank decides, because he always dresses up like Batman anyway, that he's going to become Batman. Yes. <laughs> and, like, take up the mantle and vamp. <laughs> right. Well, right. I mean, and this not, is all you, not... Andy. You are Venture Brothers. Guy. Yes. Well, I will say this. The Venture Brothers is by far one of the greatest television shows out there. If you have not watched The Venture Brothers, you need to watch it now. I mean, I think it's wrapped up by now. They 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 finally put out a final movie just I think last uh last fall. And so like you can Star watch Trek. the entire series, but boy is it wonderful. Yeah. Uh and, and and as a comic book fan, if you're a comic book fan or even even remotely a comic book fan, you're gonna pick out all these little Easter eggs. And it's super easy to have Hank be Batman because he just steals all of his dad's tech that his dad stole off of his dad. And, and, and then you got the Monarch who's like, again, the Monarch's turn as being like the green Hornet stand in was like super awesome. So if he wants to, there's just so many possibilities, right? Wait, wait, can we go back to the dad? Like Robin. Can we go back to the dads? Is this like how Thomas Wayne dressed up like Batman before Bruce Wayne became Batman and they were all Batmans? Were those guys interacting together? At a a party. Yes. At a party. Yes. And then you have like, and then you can just bring in all of the bad guys uh, to be the rogues gallery members. And they'd all feel bad for Hank. So they just show up and we're like, yeah, I'll, I'll pretend, you know, you got Orpheus. He'll show up and he'll be like, I'll put on a Dr. Fate mask and pretend I'm Dr. Fate for a little while. Uh, you'll have, I don't know, um, the alchemist put on a, a red wig and pretend that he's uh, poison ivy. I, I, it's, it, there, the, the, there's a myriad of, of options here. So, Nick, thank you so much for even just mentioning the, uh, the Venture Brothers and how awesome that show is. But I think there's a lot you can there would be like that. so there'd be so much fertile ground for it because you think about it too like the, a lot of that show is about jonas senior so thomas wayne and jonas senior definitely would have been broing it up and they're like <laughs> like their super friends group with like the like the sean connery james bond knockoff that just straight up mercs people left and right <laughs> everything like that like that thomas wayne would have been part of that whole group yeah 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 no it's absolutely right I'm not doing it justice, but it's a great, 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 great idea. And I, I think it's a good form to watch the Here we go. All right. I just saw the word all in the family again. I was like, wait a minute. Didn't we already do this? But uh, Anonymous, another $100 donation. Uh, I don't know who you are, Anonymous, but thank you. Uh, all in the family as Alpha Force doing a rendition of All About Eve. <laughs> Alpha Force? They mean Alpha Flight? Yeah, I don't know Alpha Force. I don't know what Alpha Force is. Alpha Flight, though. I mean, for $100, uh, I'll pull up Google. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, make up a team. <laughs> so there's a team called Alpha Force, right? And they're just made up of a bunch of jabronis, right? Like, I don't know, uh, Hypno Hustler and... <laughs> and. But are they Sigma. Canadian? I don't know if uh, Archie Bunker is going to put up with Canadians. <laughs> It's a series of adventure novels aimed at teenagers. The eponymous Alpha Force are a group of five teenagers with unique talent, skills, and personalities who were shipwrecked together in the first book. And after being forced to work together as a team, created strong friendships with each other. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the kids from Captain Planet? Pretty <laughs> much. The heart and the fire? Like, uh, yeah. Well, Edith is but the heart then. Like kids. I think he likes kids. I don't. I don't think he was ever mean to a kid on that show. Um, so if they're like, as long as they're not like bothering him uh, and playing in the backyard, 
my Alpha Force Google got me shoes. So we can say they're all wearing kick-ass Nikes. From what from what I'm reading on Wikipedia, Alpha Force is a is is a British uh, novel series. So uh -huh. obviously, Archie Bunker is not going to like them Scots. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. Even, but again, he doesn't mind kids. He doesn't. So as long as they're outside playing stickball or whatever it is yeah. they do in the streets, there he's fine. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm guessing. I'm guessing as long as they're below like the Midlands, anything above the Midlands, <laughs> he's like, no, no, York, Leeds, forget that. <laughs> I, I, if you're from London, if you're from you know the south of of the country of England, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. But up. The, those those Welsh people, those Scottish people, no thank you. There's no Cockney in Archie's bar. No Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't he also? Didn't they also throw in all about Eve, which is like isn't yeah, that a all about Eve was in there too. Yeah, yeah. I think so it was. A... So wait, let me read it again. Hang on. It was okay. all in the family as Alpha Force. So they're as these teenagers from this book series doing a rendition of All About Eve. I don't know what All About Eve is. <laughs> All right. So all about Eve. That's a Betty Davis movie. Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, I have it so We're just gonna say yes and just go. Okay. <laughs> Run with it. So, uh, so here wait, here, here's, here's your Betty Google. Davis movie. It's a backstage story revolving around aspiring actress Eve Harrington. Tattered and forlorn, Eve shows up in the dressing room of a Broadway megastar, Margot Channing, telling a melancholy life story to Margot and her friends. Margot takes Eve under her wing and appears Eve. Is a conniver that is using Margot. Dun, dun, dun. So the question is, who plays Betty Davis? No one does. Betty Davis plays herself. That's right. That's right. You have to. You got. Then who is she conniving? Young way. Archie. <laughs> Young Archie Bunker, who's also simultaneously Archie from Archie Comics. <laughs> yes. Where's the best and the, uh, the Archie-based outfit? And then that in there, there, as well? in there and Veronica and Betty. And then you just bring them in, and we're just forgetting about Alpha Force altogether. I'm starting to at the bar. I'm starting to slip and into the, the different layers here. I'm getting lost. Wow, one hundred dollars! That's a lot of money. I can have my hair done at the beauty parlor with a hundred dollars. I still don't understand why that notification will not play. Um, whenever uh, maybe it does, maybe you're right, Yanny. Maybe it plays every time it crosses over another hundred dollar. Gold or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, anonymous with a fifty dollars donation says blue, blue, like for Blue's Clues. Is we throwing blue from Blue's uh, Clues in this? Do, 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 we throw in blue. From is Blue's Archie Clues. Bunker Steve from Blue's Clues? Do that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so so why is all's well and good until they get the mail from some uh, foreign uh, immigrants, <laughs> and then oh boy, Steve goes off. Old Stevie Bunker delivers a tirade, and poor Blue needs to teach him about acceptance. I love it. I don't know. Somebody else step in. What's the little pink dog? The little uh, uh, Blue's Clues. I don't. Pink dog. Uh, isn't ah, there a pencil? On. There's a pencil and a pad of paper that talk, maybe. Yeah, they get excited about mail. Yeah, they do get excited. It's mail time. Now, yeah, so um, Archie... Uh, so Blue is like trying to teach about tolerance, and then the mail comes. Yeah, they find out Magenta's actually A Force novels uh, <laughs> that somebody had to buy because they didn't know what the hell they were. Uh, they were like, "I need to sit away so I can do some research on this." And in that, with it is a VHS tape of All About Eve. So they all sit down, they watch it because they got to get ideas. Um, and, at the and then Archie time, realizes he's watching. not being connived upon. They're, they're they're expanding their minds. They're getting more intelligent. They're becoming more tolerant, and then blue it, blue wins by default. So, yeah, blue helps Archie find the clues he needs to gain. That's power. true. I actually think yeah. we messed this whole thing up. Alpha oh, Force. No. Alpha Force is also a testosterone supplement. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then well, Archie that makes a lot more sense with Betty Davis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he, grabs, he grabs some Alpha Force and he just like he gives that syringe. He just jams it in his ass. Brings, brings, it, brings a whole new out meaning out to Betty Davis' I'm eyes. Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna fight anybody, including Blue, if they if they try to not teach me. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm gone. Uh, and then here comes Blue. He's a surprise guest. What's you your go. rating? What's your rating? 
Uh, so yeah, uh, back to Star Trek v X Men. Oh shit! Star I forgot Trek we were even talking about that. <laughs> Heck yeah! <laughs> so did we. Uh, no, this was this was fun, and I liked the fact that it was silly. I liked the fact that it was short. If this was five or six issues, I would have lost attention way or, or way into it. But uh, I'm going to give it a three seven five. I think this is exactly what you want out of a crossover. They show up. They do the Vulcan death pinch. You know, you get some X Men uh, melodrama. I was shocked how well the universe is molded together with Proteus and Gary as Grotius. Uh, but everything seemed to work. They found a way to make it work. And so for that, I think that's a successful crossover. All right, J.A., you're both the X-Men and uh, Star Trek fan. Real quickly, your grade? Yeah, I was amazed how me- how well the spandex and polyester worked together. It was, you've got <laughs> the, so... Uh, if anything, I can ding it. It wasn't quite long enough. I could have used another 20 pages. I could have used a bit more uh, Star Trek characters and, and X-Men characters. I just think think that uh, the people that they were playing with, didn't. some of them got a bit of a short shrift. Uh, but it's a three. It's solid. It's as great. No. Um, the art is great. Love that Silvestri art. But... You know, it's 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 weird. It's just weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the, I think I'm gonna. I was so I was just to say the sort of the what they're drawing from episode three of Star Trek, where no man has gone before, and uh, the X Men, where Proteus first shows up, uh, Uncanny X Men one twenty five through one twenty eight. Those sit alone are much better than this mashup i think so if you want sort of the parents of the mashup and 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 that would be my recommendation is is to read those before you and and watch the show before you you get into this the sum of its parts the parts are better than the sum yeah well i think that's i think where i'll I'll close out here uh is saying like Again, I don't think you need to know a ton about the X-Men or Star Trek to enjoy this. Like, I think you know enough from pop culture to be like, oh, yeah, I know these characters. And they really only play with the big ones. Like, Bishop, I think, is the only one where people would scratch their heads and go like, who the hell is this guy? All right, well, whatever. He's on this team. But everybody else, Storm, Cyclops, Jean Grey, all as anybody that even remotely knows about the X-Men probably knows about them. But I am surprised, gentlemen. I am surprised that you're giving this such Here good grade. This is like a two. Here we go. Ah, right. he's saved Here by the bell. The What's money. going on here? Uh, well, that was my brother jumping in there with a nineteen dollar and seventy four cent donation because I guess he. Look, Chris, you're the one that ruined it yesterday and made it uneven. So now he evened it back up again at eighteen hundred dollars even. Thank you so much, Chris, holy for holy. Uh, for uh, for the donation in there. Chris, if you if you got two things you want to mash up, we still got a couple minutes. Yeah, there you go. Comic book and a TV show, or the, yeah. if you a testosterone supplement, shoe brand, whatever the hell you want to throw in there. Apparently, <laughs> but I will say, okay. yeah, this is like a two. Uh, this is the closest thing to shoving peanut butter and ham together. No, I'm trying to make a sandwich. No. Maybe what putting toothpaste about? on top, it's like peanut butter the only and bananas. Thing that works is it's the art. peanut butter and bananas. No, no. What it, kind of ham? Thing works. Um, from <laughs> if it's from Canadian, Canadian Archie Bunker will have. Starship doesn't work. Completely catches Kirk from by 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 just just off guard. He's like, "What who the hell is this guy punching a spaceship?" And I think some people might think that's cool. I I, I was just like, "All right, this is going off the rails at this point." And then like that Vulcan neck pinch on Wolverine. Now nah, he would have been eviscerated. I don't care what Spock does. Like he would have been eviscerated by Wolverine. That's Wolverine. Damn it! Um, I gotta know. I gotta I gotta I gotta know the answer to one question. Then I'm gonna rate this on a scale of one to four, like you guys. One answer. Does Kirk bang any of the X Men? Oh yeah, he tries to. He tries yeah, to. No. Four, four. Get it on four out of four. Done. Done. No, four he doesn't four. even try to. He bangs Storm and Jean Grey at the same time. <laughs> Ten out of four. What Twenty out of four. T- what page was that? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for that one in here. I don't see that. Andy's what got the special edition. That's all. Because <laughs> nobody, nobody can match the machismo, like. I think Seriously. Gary gets some death bird. That's the only <laughs> yeah. reason Kirk was on that Enterprise was to propagate the human species when he meets other races. He's like, gotta seed it. 
goodness. I mean, that's as good a place as any to uh, to start wrapping up this segment here. we got five minutes left. Uh, before you guys run away, uh, let them know, uh, you know, just where they can find you guys out there on the web. My brother said football and lingerie, but I think they already do that. They yeah, do that. Now yeah, he's yeah, just projecting his fantasies into the chat. That's... <laughs> Nice. Football and laundry. All right. Uh, so, so, yeah, we are the last comic shop podcast. Thanks so much for having us on, Nick. As always, make sure that you're checking us out over at www.lastcomicshoppodcast.com. It's a terrific place where you can rate, review, and subscribe uh, and get a myriad of our episodes, almost 200. We will have our 200th episode later this October. Uh, all of those episodes, evergreen. If you can, you can just listen to any of them in any order you want. Just find books that you like or characters you like. Listen to that episode. We'll give you a, a review. We'll give you recommendations for other comic books you can show check out. And uh, Chad, make sure that you uh, plug where our socials are. Yeah. So I have this idea about perfect strangers, but it's Deadpool and Cable with cousin Larry Appleton and Balky Bartakamus, <laughs> and they have to time slide back to meet Post to destroy a sheep. Before he ruins the future. <laughs> Wait, no, what was I supposed to do? The social media is Oh, yeah. At Last Comic uh... Shop Podcast. You can find us on the X. You can find us on the Blue Skies, on all those other places. Uh, look for more comic book recommendations, Golden Age covers to put you to bed at night, all that other fun stuff. And then circle back to our website, www.lastcomicshoppodcast, where they can find what else, J.A.? Well, we've got links to our merch store, so you can get t-shirts like the ones that we're sporting, you can get tote bags, you've got coffee mugs. Uh, this week only, polyester Star Trek inspired uniforms and or spandex. So yeah. you just buy one and it shows up and, and it, you, you don't get a choice. So right. you get one or the other. <laughs> it's all artificial materials here. Just it's a mystery bag. <laughs> yes. Polymers. Just Not unlike art. this comic book. And, and it, it, when you were saying we've done almost 200 episodes, we've done a lot of X-Men. We haven't done nearly enough Star Trek. Oh, I think this I is fine. Any. And seeing how much Chad loved it, I think we need to do some more Star Trek. You get a pick every three weeks. You can say them. You don't. So don't come complaining Star to me. Star Trek. So. Just saying. It's like every three, every three weeks, just start like episode one, episode yeah. two, episode There's three. a reason no man has gone there before. It's kind of boring. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, this has been an absolute treat, an absolute blast. Thank you guys so, so much uh, for spending some time here. Uh, Grim of Kings is absolutely correct. Cancer sucks. Donate now. 100% of all of your donations go to the Cancer Research Institute to a world immune to cancer. Uh, so uh, thank you guys, everybody who did donate. Uh, hashtag red shirts for the cure. Are we just... I like it. Are we murking, like it. Are we murking strangers to get a cure for cancer? I mean... <laughs> They, they don't really have Whatever character names, so... Well, yeah, yeah. Hey, there's no cancer in, in Star Trek, so they must have cured it by then, by the 23rd century. I love that. That's what, we, that's what we're going to continue yeah. aiming for. Gentlemen, uh, an absolute treat, as always. You're going to be welcome back every single year. Uh, you're just absolutely incredible, and I love you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. Right. I really Thanks appreciate so it. Thanks so much, Nick. Hey, continue donating, Thank you. folks. Thank continue you donating. Donate Stick too. around for all of the live stream for the cure. It is awesome. Let us beat cancer. Woo! I just wanted to let him ride that and see where it went. <laughs> I love you guys so much. <laughs> Have a great night, guys.